Hi, I'm Tim, everybody. Howdy. <laughs> You're muted, Tim. You're muted. <laughs> How about now? <laughs> there you go. Can you hear me well, now? Can you hear me now? No. You're muted again. <laughs> Yeah, you're muted. Okay, screw that you're... thing. <laughs> Push the talk sucks, not using it. Yeah. Right. All right, yeah, so my only claim, that's why I don't do this live, people. Train professional, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> yeah. No, my, my only uh, claim to fame is I'm a, a Matt's normal, you know, group DM, so to speak. So, Ooh. anyway. Yeah. Some revenge tonight. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, <laughs> how many characters of his have you killed? Said, the latest right. one, was, there, was a, there was a small incident with a cloud giant monk, and uh, it did not go well for his character. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, an understatement. Oh, yeah. That is a super understatement. <laughs> did double my hit points negative, I think. Ouch. Yeah, it was, there it was, was some criticals, yes. It was really bad. Okay, who's next? Well, I'm Lori. Uh, I, yeah, what do I do? Uh, so I'm a tattoo artist here in, uh, right outside of Denver. Um, so I'm down the road from Mr. Rift here. Um, so, yeah, so I run games. Uh, generally, <clears throat> I'll run large scale games with 60 to 180 players uh, as the only GM. And that's kind of my thing. <laughs> uh, I'm known for running zombie games because that's kind of my shtick. I've tried not zombie games, but I'm just really good with zombies. And generally, my, <laughs> my home rules, home brewed game is if you make me laugh, it's a success. And if you roll a one, you're going to die. But in a really funny way. So that's kind of me. Nice. So I'm John. Um, I know Matt because uh, I'm actually working on some D&D Adventures 4 for him. And then I uh, got to actually meet Chuck at uh, Gary Con this past year. That's right, the famous artist. No, yeah. I didn't realize you were. I remember him saying you were playing, but I just did not recognize you just now. Next, is that what's going on here? Yep. Fine. I'm Chuck. Um, <laughs> Combo. Uh, you guys may see me. My name is Baboonski. That's my alias back when I used to have him running from the law and stuff. But I just, oh. I'm retired and uh, I'm just involved in all kinds of gaming stuff. Me and Matt work together on stuff. I work for Troll Lord Games and. Huh. I just kind of hang out in cons and try and beg for free games and that kind of stuff. Lots of different things. And nice. you're on Mars. I'm on Mars, yes. <laughs> I, I run I run a lot of games. Currently, I'm running just basically 5e and, and CNC right now. Castle's Crusade is my two main ones that I'm running. But uh, I do other stuff, you know, like this. Tonight, I was excited about this. This will be fun. Well, hopefully it'll be fun. We just were talking that you're the only one that's uh, actually played the Year Zero uh, rules before, so we'll we'll muddle through it. And I haven't played in a, in a while, but it's a fun game, though. Yeah. I'm Bill. Uh, let's see. I'm in Chicago. Uh, I do game reviews for geeksgo.com, which my wife runs. And I had another writer review this game, so I have no idea what I'm doing. I just and Matt, my that... character she is Luke Davis. Is that correct? That's the one I should have. Yes. Okay. Then I do have it. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's a good point. You want to, now that we've got the major parts away, we will come ready to start. Everybody looks good. Smiley, happy faces. Hold on. Problems. See what the problem was with Tim now. When I go on another screen, it's pulling one of those deals. Okay, yeah, you got it. I, I said screw it. I'm just going to stick with the yeah, hand, if the, you hear my the hand mute. Part, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tim, you're the pilot, and Bill, you're the captain. Is that right? Yeah, so yeah, I'll be playing the bus driver tonight. Um, what are you playing? I'm the grumpy bearded man, Kale. I was told to be roughneck number two, I think, whatever that means. You're Lyron. Yeah, it's right up there with crewman number six. Ah, okay. <laughs> or, yeah, red shirt number I'll, one. I'll just grip. I'm sure you're going to survive this. <laughs> What's your last name? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a red shirt on. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> some guy walking uh, around the con now and he came in he was dressed up full star trek but he had a red shirt and i was like man you make the wrong color today <laughs> oh i didn't think about that i was like nice knowing you okay so uh we are about to start the cinematic rpg 
episode, I guess, adventure in the Alien RPG demo made by Free League Games. Uh, you guys are playing the crew of the USCSS Montero. Uh, you are currently, as of like right this second, in hypersleep on a uh, as you're making a delivery run of helium three uh, to Sutter's world. And I'll read that here in just a second, but. Um, Actually, we'll save that. I was going to say introduce yourselves, but we'll save that for just a second. All right, so what's the story? As I mentioned, your space truckers on the Starfreighter US CSS Montero running the gauntlet, quote unquote, the trade route between Anchor Point Station and the Frontier. Your ship, uh, your ship's hold is packed with dozens of tanks of the rare gas helium-3. Usually, uh, cargoes such as these are towed in massive tanker modules that transport much higher concentrations of the gas a safe distance away from the freight hauler. The Montero, however, uh, isn't rated as a commercial towing vehicle, and this small run uh, is a special order for Weyland Yutani, uh, for a Weyland Yutani corporate account on Sutter's World, which it, in and of itself is a newly established frontier colony. Uh, while the trip so far has been fairly routine, the Montero's sensors developed a glitch before you left Anchor Point and, sporadically and, ha and were sporadically pinging contact with a sensor reflection before you activated the uh, displacement drive and went FTL. Your cargo run has so far been without incident. Now you're just awakening from hypersleep, ready to deliver your goods to the colony of Sutter's World. All right. So, uh, let's move you guys over here. As you can see, hopefully you've got a map of the Montero. Everybody see the map? Everybody good? Yep. We all good? Yep, good. Yep. All right, so you can kind of see there the scale of the ship. This is a small freighter. Uh, actually, you can't see the scale, can you? It's not listed on there. This is a small freighter at uh, like 280 meters, I think, something around the big in the uh, on the human scale, but as far as freighters go, kind of small. Uh, as you wake up uh, out of hypersleep, you guys are here in cryo. Much like the movies, uh, you wake up with that just nasty taste in your mouth. Uh, some people are getting kind of sick uh, to their stomach. You feel pretty nauseous and definitely dehydrated. So uh, what most of you decide to do after uh, after after a few minutes of recovery and recuperation, most of you decide to meet in the galley located here on the ship. So I will tell you, uh, I'll take the time right now to tell you that the way that movement works in this is a lot more free than probably, uh, a lot more free than probably any other role-playing game you've ever played. So especially if you're used to D&D or Pathfinder uh, type games where you're moving five foot squares, your characters. In this particular case, uh, you can take an action and move from uh, up to two rooms with one action. So you have slow and fast actions. You get two actions in one turn. You can take one slow, one fast, or you can take two fast. Yeah, so slow actions are things like crawl, uh, shoot a firearms, throw a weapon, reload, first aid, stop panic, which we'll talk about here in a little while, persuade somebody, start the engine of a vehicle. Fast actions include running. If you're not engaged with an enemy, much like a D&D or a Pathfinder, something to that effect, uh, running away from an enemy who's actively trying to pummel you is a bad idea. Sure, if you don't take extra precautions. Uh, you can get up as a fast action, draw a weapon, block an attack, push, grapple, uh, retreat, aim, seek cover, grab the wheel of a vehicle, use an item, etc. etc. So that's kind of what you're looking at here. So in other two words, actions can, you, per turn, correct? Uh, two Basically, per, per turn or per round, uh, and you can move from one one room to another. All right. Got another it. quick another quick note: there are three modes in this game. One is combat, which is calculated in rounds. The other one is turns, which is basically a five to ten minute period of you wandering around the ship doing things. Uh, and then the third is uh, is a shift. And a shift is between five and ten hours. And right now we are currently in turns. We're currently in the five to ten minute range of doing stuff. So you have all decided to gather in the galley to uh, 
rest and recoup, get your strength back, and now is a perfect opportunity to introduce yourself, I'm sorry, introduce your character and uh, anything pertinent about uh, about him in the notes. Let's start with, why don't we start with Captain? I'm uh, Dick Miller, captain of the ship. Don't seem terribly enthusiastic about anything. Uh, you kind of get the idea that I um, hate being a corporate man. And I'm uh, just sort of stuck in this uh, big you. machine that is Wayland Utah. Perfect. All right. How about let's see who else we got here. Luke. Yeah, I'm uh, Luke Davis. I'm the pilot. I'm uh, a little bit of a hot shot, a little bit full of himself, as all pilots tend to be. So, uh, looking forward to some action. Get rid of the boredom of a of a cargo run. Excellent. All right. Then we've got Kale. Mm. So, uh, Kale Ray, um, not quite as glamorous as the uh, pilot and captain. Uh, seems like I get to do about twice the work for half the pay from you guys. And uh, I think it's not pretty much uh, pretty much well known that uh, I'm doing a lot of this for my brother, sick back home. I uh, try to carry his picture with me everywhere. But, uh, yeah, definitely going to uh, try to weasel a little bit out of you guys because uh, I got bills to pay. Lyron. I've been pronouncing Wait. it Lyrone, like Tyrone, but however you I was thinking Lyron or Lyron. Okay. Yeah, Tyrone would make more sense. Lyron. Lyron okay. sounds weird, though. <laughs> and Lyron. what is it, Camson? Camson, Camson maybe? Yep. 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 All right. Well, I'm Lyron Camson, and I've wandered the universe most of my life. Don't have a family. You guys, <sighs> as crazy as you are, closest thing I have to a family. I've spent oh, most of my life operating machinery and just getting by. And, well, I'd like to make it through one more mission if you guys will stick with me. That's about it. You planning to retire after this one? Yeah. One last job. <laughs> one last job. Two, one months to re- to go well. two months to retirement. All right, James. All right, so uh, I work for the corporation. I've been working for them for many, many years, and uh, I am all about uh, taking Mm. care of uh, their needs and making sure you guys stay in line. So the family part was those three, not you. Is that what I'm doing? (laughs) Okay. Even though they are, in fact, it says, even no matter how dysfunctional they are, John. so it sounds like the corporate agents are the comrade commissars. Mm, yeah. Everyone yeah, loves a watchdog. That's right. I mean, I'm here as a go-between of you guys and the corporate people. I'm here for you. I'm, I'm, I'm here to make <laughs> your day well. Absolutely. I'm, I'm Good job, team. You. Right, You're right. If I, Matt. <laughs> If I need a uh, if I need a memo written, I'll be sure to let you know. I'm good at those. Help me help you. Help right. me help you. Okay. Uh, right now, so uh, you guys are all gathered in the galley and currently suffering from dehydration, which is similar to uh, most other role playing games. Uh, it's a condition. Dehydration is not a condition in other role-playing games, but they have conditions, and dehydration is one of them. Uh, While you're dehydrated and replenishing, um, you cannot heal. You cannot uh, cannot recover health from resting, uh, and you suffer, I think, something. Anyway, you're in bad shape at the moment. So don't go launching yourself out to do a spacewalk or anything like that. On page 70 are the effects. Uh, yeah, you cannot recover health or relieve stress. That was the other one. Every shift, you suffer one point of damage, and your stress level increases by one step. Uh, as soon as you drink, you're no longer uh, dehydrated. So um, getting here in the galley and getting some food in your belly has definitely changed your perspective on life. Improved your situation entirely. All right, how so. Does, uh, how does stress affect us? Yep. Good I question. Mean, 
So two things, you'll notice on your character sheet you have basically two stats, or maybe even above your character icon there on the page, uh, you have two stats that are probably most critical for your character's survival. One is health, as is with almost every other role-playing game, and the other is stress. Uh, health is equal to, there's a reason they're all zeros, your health is equal to your strength. So you'll notice that there are a couple of you that are particularly brittle uh, and can't suffer a lot of damage. The, uh, you can recover health uh, via, either via items like a uh, like a med God, pack or called? some sort. Yeah, there's a med there's a med bay, for example, you can go in the med bay and heal after a couple turns. There's uh, some stimulants and other med pack uh, stuff, or in the med lab rather, some stimulants and other things that you can use to recover some health as well. Health is not your life essence. It's not like you reach zero hit points and um, you, you keel over. It If you get to your uh, if you max out your health and you take enough damage to get to zero or to get to your, your strength score rather uh, you're broken and you essentially are able to crawl around on the ground maybe cry out in pain uh, you suffer a traumatic injury of some sort but somebody can pick you up and help you out of the room or help you to the med bay or whatever it is that they need to do to get you back up and rolling uh, what? if you suffer a if you do suffer a critical critical injury there is a chance you can just die outright or eventually die if you don't get medical attention. Stress, okay. on the other hand, is an accumulative dread that kind of builds in the character and it can happen uh, across many different, uh, it can happen for many different reasons. One, uh, if you see a, a, one of your, one of your uh, comrades take damage, you take a point of stress. If you decide you've got a, a pulse rifle in your hand, you decide you're gonna unload on somebody full automatic that deals a point of stress to you um, there are several specific situations in this scenario for example that will deal stress damage and uh, you just accumulate it every time you accumulate a point of stress you add that number of you'll see on your character sheet you have stress dice or a stress dice button you'll add that to your skill check so if I'm gonna make this computer, I'm going to try and break into the computer and uh, crack the passcode, I roll my com tech plus my stress dice, which in and of itself sounds great because it increases your chance to succeed. However, uh, if you roll a one on the stress dice, then that means you panic as well. And you have to roll your roll against the panic table and then all kinds of fun stuff happens then. Maybe <laughs> if, if, for, if, for example, if for example you're Corporal Hicks uh, and you roll a uh, and you roll to panic, you might unload your, your pulse rifle and run out of ammo. Or you might just go running off out of combat or charge the, uh, charge the bad guy trying to, just trying to get rid of the situation. I think one player has command, which I believe is the captain. And with a command roll, the captain can bring you out of panic or you just have to go through the whole that one whole round in a panic state, and eventually you'll come out of it on your own. Okay, so with that being said, what are what are we doing? We're sitting in the galley right now. Everything seems to be normal. Uh, based on your character, uh, just kind of give me a general rundown of what you what you think they'd be doing. Well, I feel gross and have been, you know, asleep, essentially. Uh, I want to clean up and get all fancy and pretty and look all corporate. Look all Slick corporate. the hair down and all that good stuff. Okay. So you head off so to the So I will hygi go to the hygiene. hygiene and personal locker area. Okay, great. Can uh, we move yeah. them around? We can, can't we? Yeah. Uh, Burr. I go there. The icons yeah. are kind of giant, but whatever. Yeah, I was wondering if I'm, I'm, I'm missing <laughs> something. There you go. That's a tiny icon. Now my icon's tiny. Actually, I'm going to oh, do now this. Oh, now it's huge. <laughs> I'm going to do this. Hold on. Let's do... All right, so Jane's Camera one, camera here. two. Camera one, there we go. camera two. All right, so Jane's in. So Sorry. ignore the ones across the top, and then uh, you've got an icon there in hygiene. All right. Oh, there we go. Uh, Vic, what are you up to? Captain, I'd like a report of uh, what's happening in the ship here. We make sure everything's uh, functioning as normal. Okay. Great, so uh, that, is, that is one other good... 
there you go. So I get, I'm, I'm dropping your icons in here as I'm giving you actions. So you can probably head to the bridge maybe. Uh, that is one thing I failed to mention. So I am mother. I am the all-knowing, omnipotent uh, computer that runs the ship, uh, or any ship for that matter. So that is my role in the game. And uh, if, just like in the Alien movies, you could talk to mother from anywhere in the ship. So uh, you could see her actual processing core is right here. But that's the kind of the role I play. So if you ask, when you ask me a question, most of the time, unless you're talking to another NPC, you're talking to Mother. All right, so you're going to head to the bridge. Okay. Uh, what about... Yeah, I'll ask Mother for a report and uh, ask the pilot to uh, verify, uh, like, get, get human eyes on the control to make sure everything's good. Okay, great. So, Luke, Captain's talking Wait. to you. Yeah, yeah, Skipper, I'm on my way. So I, I grab a big old bottle of water and head toward the bridge as well. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that leaves the Roughnecks. What are uh, Lyran and and uh, Kale doing? Uh, Kale's not really in a huge hurry to leave the galley. He's, he's fine sitting and drinking his water and taking his time. Okay. Easy. And uh, what about Lyron? Well, I'm going to fix me up a big old pot of coffee. <laughs> I'm going to find that bottle of whiskey I had hidden behind the crackers and I'm going to pour a little bit of special in my coffee, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm going to sit here and just kind of figure out what in the hell is going on. All right. So the two uh, two deckhands are chilling out in the galley. Captain and the pilot go to the bridge, and the corporate is headed off to get cleaned up. All right. Um, so Mother reports... Uh, Vic, all systems are nominal. We came out of hyperspace 35 minutes ago. All systems check out. Hyper or uh, faster than light drive nominal. Waiting your orders. I double check our uh, position while you're getting that. Okay, good opportunity to uh, just give me a pilot. Actually, uh, Probably a pilot check. So I just click the piloting button, I'm guessing? Yep, just click uh, piloting the word. That should give us a good roll. Oh, if modifiers is, so I guess input modifiers is zero. Yeah, I'll tell you the modifiers if there are any. There aren't any on this one. Okay. Yeah, so there you can see he rolled. Uh, what is that, eight dice? Yeah, eight dice. He only got one success, but in order to do the action that he was needing, uh, that's that's all that he, that's all that's required. Uh, if you look under skills uh, in the skills section of the book, which I think is, that's close to the front. Um, you can also, you also have uh, basically bonuses if you get more than one success. So if he were to get two successes, he would have had a stunt available not that you need it to check your location, but you would have had a stunt available to do something uh, extra with your piloting check. Um, so you're you fully expected to come out of hyperspace near Sutter's world, which is uh, where you're trying to deliver the helium three, and uh, you note that you are not anywhere. Sutter's three is not uh, coming up anywhere on the com, and. You're trying to, you try to hail them a couple times, they don't pop up. You spend a little bit of time, uh, computer processor, you spend a little bit of computer processing time to um, try to ID your location, and you come up way short of Sutter's home. In fact, uh, you're probably about six weeks out from Sutter's home still. Uh, so re you, realizing that, I kind of lean, lean, lean forward and tap on the computer. I say, hey, hey Skipper, I'm getting, some, uh, I'm getting some weird readings here. You might want to look at this. What's up? This seems where we're, mother says we're hell and gone from uh, Sutter, Sutter's. You want to want to double check me on this? Um, yeah, I'll give it a roll too. Just to make sure. Warning, uh, warning, incoming ship, collision course. Mother, what's going on? Uh, Vic, there is All a right. ship on course to intercept. All right, get us out of here, Luke. Copy that. Where's it at? It just takes some evasive action. 
All right, so the klaxon starts. They're like starts. A, a collision alarm I can hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was just gonna say. So the the collision alarm is going off. The klaxons are firing. You you tap the button and start off, and then uh, the blip disappears. And uh, you recall right before you guys went into hyperspace that your, for whatever reason, uh, your your antenna like array had glitched. developed had developed some sort of glitch, and it seems to have uh, persisted even while you were in cryosleep. All right, so I banged the side of the dashboard. I was like, God damn, it's that goddamn glitch again. <laughs> Is the, the warning klaxon something that we heard in the galley too? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. So that klaxon went around across the whole ship. All right, I'm going to make my way up to the bridge too then. I will okay. also make my way to the bridge. Let's get what us uh, back on course here. Um, we're, we're still uh, we're still six weeks short of our target, right? Yep, correct. That's what All she's right, saying. So Think that has something to do with the glitch? Maybe. Um, let's take a look at our systems. Uh, let's see what we can do. Maybe we can debug this. Um, let me see. I'm looking for the perfect skill here. Um, Give me a uh, yeah, probably either. Yeah, so either Tim or uh, Bill, give me a com tech, com tech roll. Com tech. I don't uh, have any com tech. Okay, if you don't, that's All right, fine. Same here. I'll, well, yeah. then never mind. Hey, I just, uh, I just fly the thing. I don't, I don't make it go. HR lady, you think you can fix this? Yeah, I could. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it says my modifier is zero. Yep, it is. So the modifier, okay. if I tell you you've got negative two, that's where you would put that. What? Wait, what? <laughs> just click. Just click OK. Just click OK. Just click. Just. Oh. Am I putting something in the modifier? You said negative. Nope. 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 Just leave it be. Okay. Yep. I'm going out of that. All right. So a Comtech roll. What am I rolling? You should just click OK. If it's asking for the modifier, <laughs> you just click submit and you're ready to go. Okay. There you go. Okay, so uh, uh, she goes over to the goes over oh, to the system uh, communication array, tries to look around a little bit, uh, types in types in a couple of uh, hail commands, uh, reach out maybe to a beacon or something. Uh, you should have been following our normal trade route, as I mentioned before, uh, and nothing. Not, not a beacon, not no sign that you're in the Sutter world's Sutter's world system. Nothing. 